Hey everyone, it's the Nerdy Pastor here today with a retro game review. Um, this is a game from 1993, um, produced by Konami and designed by um, Lucas Arts, designed by Mike Ebert, programmed by Dean Sharp. The composer was Joe McDermott, and it was on the Super Nintendo. The, um, the Genesis, the Wii Virtual Console, came out as well, but it was released in 1993 in September um, on the. Super Nintendo in November 93 in the Genesis, and it's called Zombie Ate My Neighbors. This was one of the uh, popular uh, run and gun genres of single player, and it was also co-op. Uh, but 1993 was a great year for me. My, my son was born. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys beat the Buffalo Bills 52 to 17. And then Hadaway asked a very important question. What is love? And then he answered that with the dance, you know. And why not a writer broke up with Johnny Depp, so my opportunity was finally open. And then Zombie Ate My Neighbors was released. As you see here, going through the first stage, a few games got my attention um, as Zombie Ate My Neighbors in 93, 94, and 95. And it was only when Triple uh, Play 96 was released that I stopped playing this game. And, and even then, taking a break from swinging for the fences, uh, with my made-up players, uh, Scott Summers, if you was in that game, if you created a, a player with that name, he was a, a beast. But anyway, even then, uh, taking breaks, I would unplug my Genesis and then plug in the Super Nintendo. Because back then, you know, multi-switching, what was that? I love the running gun action of zombies. As this game was developed by Lucas Arts and published by Konami, Z Zombies at the time was not a uh, commercial success, but was, was well received uh, for its graphic style, and it is very humorous. The premise was that the player uh, could choose between two characters, Zeke and Julia, or both if you were doing a co-op, uh, if you had a friend, a brother, or a sister, or in case my awesome wife, you know, we were newly married around that time and in, in this game uh, we would uh, navigate suburban neighborhoods shopping malls pyramids haunted castles and other areas and in these multiple locations you fought uh, vampires werewolves and then these incredibly huge demonic babies and then chainsaw wooden maniacs among many others and it had 48 stages including seven optional bonus levels if you met the requirements and the object of the game was to rescue as many neighbors um, and your neighbors were chefs and babies and teachers and cheerleaders uh, although my jaded uh, post high school self you know graduating in 91 I didn't mind if a few cheerleaders uh, didn't make it uh, just kidding you know I mean, <laughs> you had no time for me in high school uh, I'll take my time rescuing you but but you know I'm, I'm, I'm over that uh, now, yeah, I'm, I'm over that now. Uh, but anyway, if an enemy touches the neighbor, then they would perish and uh, you would lose out on points at the end of the level. A newer mechanic for me at the time was that on certain levels, the daytime would gradually turn to night. And upon nightfall, the tourist neighbor would transform into werewolves, which was kind of interesting and it was also fun. So saving neighbors then, the basic of the, the premise of the game was saving neighbors uh, earns points and then also extra lives. Uh, throughout the game there was different weapons that were located. Uh, but they included like a Uzi water gun, a bazooka which was used to break down walls. There was also weed whackers, explosive soda cans, and many other random and fun tools to destroy those nasty bad guys. The soundtrack was, to me was awesome. It was very, it was amazing. And Joseph Joe McDermott had some um, great mood enhancing music. Interestingly, at the time, the game was subject to some censorship. You know, the 90s is totally different than the um, 2020s in which we're living now. And that, this was before the ratings board, if you can remember, I don't know many people, some people I'm sure can remember a time before ratings boards. And then Nintendo, at the time, did not want violence in their video games, by and large. So in some region, the blood and gore was changed to a purple ooze. In 2009, the Super Nintendo version was ported to the Virtual 
uh, console on the way um, for more modern uh, day players to be able to access this great game. The game received great ratings with an average rating of 8 out of 10, but it was not an immediate success, but is now a cult classic. So how is it in 2020? Well, I think it has aged well. It's still fun and, and it's still a challenge for me. I think in large part due to my struggle these days with any game that isn't native um, with an analog stick. But for some reason, this is a slight issue that takes some, me some time to get used to. But the bottom line is the game is still good. With many of these retro games, I find the need to play to see if the game is actually as good as I remember it or if it is just nostalgia. But this game is good, nay, great. And so I will give this game eight cheerleaders out of 10.